problem 13, the positive difference between a pair of primes is equal to 2. And the positive difference between the cubes of the two primes is 31106. What is the sum of the digits of the least prime that is greater than, greater than those two primes? All right, so let's assume that the first prime, so prime 1 is equal to x, right? And prime 2 is equal to y. In that case, x minus y is equal to 2, and x cubed minus y cubed must give 31106. Now, x cubed, y cubed. That is a very, there's a very special factorization formula for this equation right here. That is x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared, right, must give 31106. Now, 31106, what is x minus y? Well, that's equal to 2. So we can divide 2 on both sides to get rid of it. And x squared plus xy plus y squared must give 15553. Now, what can we say about these two equations? Well, I don't like it that there's two variables because I only have one, one valid equation. But I relate x and y together from the first equation, where x is equal to 2 plus y. If I were to substitute x for this term for every single occurrence of x, then I get 4 plus 4y plus y squared, right, plus 2y plus y squared plus y squared gives 15553. Now, I also know I can simplify. I have 1, 2, 3y squared, I have 4y and 2y, so I add 6y and minus 4 on both sides, I get 9, or that's 9, 9, 4, and then 1, 5, 5. Now, I can factor out a 3y, so 3y times y plus 2, right, should give me 1, 5, 5, 4, 9. Wait a minute, I have a constant 3, I have a number here. Is this term potentially divisible by 3? Well, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 plus 5 is 11, 11 plus 4 is 15, plus 9 is 24. 24 divided by 3 is equal to 8. So it's a multiple of 3, therefore the divisibility rule says 1, 5, 5, 4, 9 is divisible by 3. So y times y plus 2 must give me 5, 1, 8, 3. Now I've simplified it to its very least possible form in terms of y. Now, I know that there must be two numbers here and that they must be prime, because remember, y is defined to be a prime number. I'll scroll up to show you right there. Prime 2 is equal to y. So that must mean that the multiplication of two numbers gives 5183. But don't randomly guess, because one trick to guess what the term should be is to look at the unit's digit. The unit's digit is equal to 3, and the unit's digit is special because only a very specific set of numbers multiplied together would give a certain unit's digit. What two numbers multiply together give a unit's digit of 3? Well, 1 times 3 gives 3, meaning that the unit digit, if the first number were to have a unit digit of 1, the second number were to have a unit digit of 3, it would give a resulting unit digit of 3. So what other numbers? Well, from the, from the top of my head, I also think of 7 times 9 to give 63, and 63 has a unit digit of 3. So any term that ends with a unit digit of 7 and 9 must give a number that ends with a unit digit of 3. So let's consider these two cases. Now, when you want to guess the product of two numbers, and you see that this number is pretty much the, sum, the product of two primes, these two primes most often are very close to each other, such as, you know, three and four, very close, like, with a difference of like two or three or five, but what I'm trying to say here is that these two numbers differ not by very much, because, you know, look at that, it's y and y plus two. So therefore, it must be very close to the square root of this term. So we must guess starting from there. So what is the square root of 5183? Well, a rough estimate that might, that might be just the roughly of 5,000, right? And 5,000 is to 5 times 10, 50, and then that's times 10 squared. So that's equal to what? That's equal to 10 times root 50. Well, root 50 is 25 times 2, which is equal to 50 times root 2. Now, 50 times root 2, that's roughly, you know, equal to whatever, but that gives me a rough sense of where it is. So one, root 2 is 1.414. And 1.414, that's roughly will give me about 70, right? And it gives me roughly 70. 70 squared is 4900, and 80 squared gives me 6400. So the term must be in between, you know, 70 and 80. That's where the number lies. So let's start guessing. Well, we know that the first term can end with a unit digit of 1. And what is a term that's between 70 and 80? Well, that's 71. So 5183 divided by 71, let's see what we get. We can put a 7 here. And then we have 49, we have a 5, we have a 2, um, we have a 3. And if we put 3 here, uh, wait a minute, did I do my math wrong? That's supposed to be 1, that's supposed to be 2, right? Then that's 3, right? So then we put a 3 here, wait a minute, that's 2, 1, 3, that gives 0. So that's 71 times 73 gives me 5, 1, 8, 3. Okay, I factored it, I know what y might be. y could be 71, 
or 73. So 71 or 73. But we're trying to find, we're trying to find the sum of the digits of the least prime that is greater than those two primes. All right, so x and y, so x must be, you know, the greater of these two. So this is x and this is y. So what is the prime that's greater than these two primes? Well, it could be 74, 75, 76, 77, 78. Wait a minute, 79. 79 is a prime, and that's greater than the primes of 71 and 73. So 79 is our final answer. Therefore, summing 79 gives you 16, bringing you to answer choice E.